Good morning, everyone. This is Ida with Created to Create. I, as promised, you guys, let me adjust you a little bit. I said I would do a tutorial on the um, the makeup box die from uh, Nicole Silhouette, and I already have all the measurements. Uh, but this is what it looks like. We're gonna we're gonna change it up just a tad, not very much. For example, I did make it wider right here instead of five eighths of an inch. It's three quarters of an inch. Um, and then I did cut it out in my base color. I only used two different, actually three, a glittered paper, a pattern paper, and a solid paper. And of course, my uh, pat my um, glitter paper will be just the little, like the makeup, the little thin frame and stuff like that. So I'm going to move this one aside and, and let's get started, you guys, because uh, being that this is a new phone, I don't know how it, um, if it stops recording at a certain point or not. So the first thing you have to do, and I already have mine cut out, um, we're going to need a piece of paper that measures um, six and three eighths by eight and a quarter. And then we're going to, and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the, the, the uh, measurements on in the description box, but you know, you can always go back and listen to it again. So my piece of paper measures six and three eighths by eight and one fourth. It's got glitter all over it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our, we're going to get our scoreboard. Let me see if I can make room. We're going to get our scoreboard. And we are going to score at um, three quarters of an inch. I'm sorry. We are not going to score at three quarters of an inch. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I'm sorry. We're going to uh, line this up the short way first. And we're going to score at three quarters of an inch. Three fourths of an inch for the... And then we're going to score, we're going to rotate it around. And again, we're going to score at three-fourths of an inch. Those are the only two score lines we're going to do on, on the short side. And then we're going to turn it on the long side. And we're going to score again at three-quarters of an inch, right here, three-fourths of an inch. And then we're going to score again at three and seven-eighths of an inch, which is right here, the point right before the four-inch mark. And then we're going to score again at four and five eighths, which is the mark that is between the is right after the five and a half. So we're going to score there at four and five eighths. And then we're going to score at seven and three fourths, which is right here. That's all the score lines we're going to need. And the reason we only have half an inch left here versus three quarter of an inch, this is that little flap. The little flap that goes uh, right in here in front of the box that goes right, tucks right into the box. So that doesn't have to be uh, the three quarter of an inch. So that's why this is shorter. So that's all you need. Um, and again, like I said, you can go back and um, you can go back and review, uh, rewind, um, start the video over so you can see the measurements and all that good stuff. Let me see, move that out of the way. So after we've done that, we're going to put our box together. And the way we're going to put our box together, well, before I even put my box together, there's one thing we do have to do. And again, this is just a piece of paper. I did not use the die at all, just the measurements that I gave you. We're going to take one of the pieces, one of the uh, pieces of the die cut, die set, and we're going to, the one with all the holes and the little sponge applicators, and we're going to line it up. You can either line it up, with the sponge applicators going towards the spine of the box, or you can line it up with the sponge applicators going to the front of the box. And what I'm gonna do here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it, and I'm gonna tape it down, and I'm gonna run it through my machine. Let me get a couple of pieces of tape. That way I can tape it down. So tape it either way, and you're going, you can see the score lines where, let me move it up some so you can see. We're gonna just center it right in between this little a rectangle that's um, in the paper. That's where you're gonna line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and 
line it up right in the center in between those score lines and wherever I think it looks about right I'm gonna tape it down because I'm gonna run it through my uh, die cutting machine now you guys don't need to see me do that uh, most of you I'm sure you all know how to use your machine so I'm gonna get out of frame for a quick second so I can go run this through my uh, die cutting through my big shot and I shall return and this is wider than um, this is wider than the regular six inch so I have to use my bigger uh, machine for this just give me one second real quick Sorry guys, I was a little quiet there. I was having tech difficulties with my machine. Anyway, um, make sure to tape it down because you don't want your uh, your die to move from the spot where you need it. And mine didn't move, thank goodness. I thought it had, but it didn't. So here it is. So I'm going to punch out all these little pieces that come out of the die. And uh, it cuts really well, guys. I can tell you that I don't have any complaints about this die set I don't know what you can do with all these little circles maybe we can come up with something for that so here is my box this is going to create the um, the box portion plus this flat that's what we're creating right now so we're gonna go ahead and put the box together and the way we're going to do that is we're going to um, we're going to snip off in the shorter side, the half inch one, we're going to go ahead and, um, you know what, let me go ahead and, and bend it so hopefully you guys can see it better. This already, again, has the score lines, so I'm going to go ahead and bend at the score lines, fold at the score lines, and that way uh, you guys can see better. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to cut these little... Uh, sections at the front of the box the little half inch piece that goes into the the box because we don't need these little two little sections right here so we can cut these completely off and I'm trying to make this as fast as I can for you guys um, that way my video doesn't cut off and I need to load more than one video. So that's the front of the box. Now we're going to snip right here the the gusset. We're just going to snip it on either side all the way up to that score mark. And I like to angle it and take little snip pieces out on either side because we want to make sure that when we go to form our box, that nothing is in the way and sometimes when you don't trim that off it kind of gives you a hard time to um, to line up and then you have to make more uh, cuts so by taking just that little uh, slither off that uh, really helps you when you're forming your box okay and then right here what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm trying to figure out which way did I do it I think I'm just going to go ahead and snip this right here. Yeah. 
just snip it right there as well and do your little triangle here as well take out that little slither and you're going to do the same thing on the other side and we're going to take off that little slither there okay so now we're going to uh, do our box put our box together now normally i don't um i don't use tape I always use wet glue so that's what I'm going to use today but before I do that let's go ahead and put the piece that goes here while it's flat because it's easier to work with and I already have mine cut out I just cut out a piece of paper all I did was cut out a piece of paper um, I use this cut it out and then I trimmed really close to the stitch line so it's maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around and because this doesn't cut all the way through this only cuts the holes and gives you the stitching line so you do have to trim this piece off uh, and I'm not going to do it for the sake of you know we don't that way we don't spend a lot of time doing this uh, but I'm also going to do something different here and um, I'm going to get a strip of paper just a little scrap left over that I had and I'm going to glue it to the back to the back where the uh, sponge applicators go and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do that because I want to glue the applicator piece back on and um, that's why I'm going to do that because I want to put a different one on there and if I don't do this it will fall all the way through and I don't want it to fall all the way through so I'm just going to cut it right here you don't want it to extend your paper uh, right there and this gives me a base to glue my uh, applicators back on I'm gonna I'm going to glue them right here on this little spot so that's what this does this gives me an opportunity and I mean if it were a little bit, bit wider it would probably be better but this is what I had on hand so this is what I'm using and I'm gonna glue these back on because I want them to to stay put so there's one and I'm going to do the same to the other one. So let's glue this one back on as well. And uh, then we're going to add the other applicators afterwards. But for now, I just want to uh, put these back on where they were. Okay. So these are nice and glued in the back. They're not going to come off because we have a strip of paper. But preferably you do want to put a water strip, maybe about a half an inch. That way, um, I don't know, I think it's just better. But this is what I did. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to add glue. And I'm going to put it in place. Because it's easier for me to do it while my box is flat versus to do it after my box is put together. Now we're going to add glue in the center, glue right here, and glue right here where it crosses over. Hopefully I have enough glue down. Okay, now let's put this in place. And uh, you can line up pretty easy because of the stitch mark and of course uh, because of the holes and stuff that are already cut there. So right there. That is what we want to do. I don't know where my bone folder is. Let me grab that really quick. I've been trying to move back into my craft room, guys. <laughs> trying to pick everything up and take it back into my craft room. So make sure you burnish this really well. Okay, so we already have everything folded. So all we're going to have to do is, like if we're making a box, we're going to add, whether you use glue or tape, add it to the little flap. And you're just going to close it up like you would a box. See, I'm going to make sure I'm lined up right there. And I'm going to hold it for a second. Because like I said, I like to use glue. And while I'm holding this, I'm going to go ahead and add glue to this. 
And that way I can do this one as well. That one should be fine. Now I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold it and close my box and line up right there at the edge. Now I could burnish it, but I'm, you know, being that it's just a little tab, I'm just gonna hold it for a couple minutes. Make sure I get all that extra glue. You don't really have to because that's not gonna show. Okay. And we're gonna do the same on these tabs. We're gonna go ahead and close it up because all we're making is a box. Pretty much is what we're making. And let me go ahead and close this one up. Make sure you're lined up nice and straight. Hold it for a sec. Unless you're using tape, then you don't have to hold it like I do. But like I said, I do prefer glue because when it dries, it to, to me, it's stronger. Tape sometimes tends to come off or I've never had any success. And let me tell you, I've used all different kinds of tapes. I've used the red line tape. I use the Suk Wang tape, the score tape. I've used that. I've used all kinds of tapes. And for me, glue is just better. So I'm going to hold this one in place. Can you see our, our palette coming together or the inside of our palette already coming together? You can see that it's already coming together. Make sure you fold these in nice and neat because you don't want them to kind of stick out of your box. So make sure they're folded in. So this, guys, this goes inside here. And this is where our little containers would go. And then we would just tuck all this in. Whoops. I need to trim this off some. So I'm just going to round these corners. Make it easier for them to go into my uh, box. Hopefully, unless there was a error in my measurements, and it looks like there might have been. These are sticking out way too much. Hmm. Let's see. No, not really. I think, guys, that we might need to trim these up a little bit more uh, to get them to slide into the uh, bottom. So let's do that. Three quarters. And we might need to shorten these, actually, to be quite honest. And we should be able to close our box. And I'm not having any success with it. There's that one. Okay. I'm also going to round these as well, the ones in the front of the flap. I don't think you can get your, your tools in here. You know those tools that we have to round the, the corners? I don't think you'll be able to do that here. Yeah. Yep, that was the... That was the problem that needed to be rounded. Yep, I still got to trim some more on this one over here. I have one side that's going in and one that isn't. So just kind of work with it until you get it to go in there. Mm, you know what? I think I probably uh, closed it too uh, much there. So be careful when you do that because I might have closed it just a tad too much. I bet you I did. And mine's already glued down, guys. So kind of be careful when you do that. I'm not going to... Well, let's see. Let's see if I can undo it. I'm going to see if I can undo this and move it back. So I might not be able to, but I might. Yeah, it's coming off. Okay, I see when you put this, when you close this, guys, make sure that you don't over, uh, that you don't close it too tight because uh, then you're going to have an issue like I just did. So I'm going to let it out a little bit. Okay. 
and hold it there for a second. So it might be a good idea to close your lid first, but see what I don't like when it sticks up right there. So I'm going to have to go back in here and trim this off a little bit because it's sticking out and I don't like it. There. So this should be good now. So that was the problem. When you close it here, guys, you might want to close your lid first and then adhere the last two sides. That way it fits perfectly. So here is our box to house our, um, our little jars. Now, what I wanted to say about these little jars that Abby has in the shop, I believe uh, these are $2 a piece and they are kind of pricey, but that's what they have to be. And because this is not regular glitter, this is actually for, for uh, nail art. But these are the types of products that she uses when she makes her cups. You know, she tries to buy something that's different, even though it's a little bit more pricey. So that's why she has these, because this is what she uses on her cups. But like I said, they are pricey. Uh, but unless you can find something else, by all means, go ahead and find it. Uh, this is what I had here uh, from her, and I was able to use that. So now we're going to... Um, Put the top and the bottom on our box. And, uh, well, let's do one more thing before we do that. Let me open it up. When we put our little containers in here, let me see. I want to share I want to share something with you. When we put our little containers in here, they kind of tend to move around, and we don't want them to move around. I need a couple more. We don't want them to move around. So I do like a little lip on the base. So when these sit in there, but although I did re reduce the size on this one, let's see if we might not even need it on this one. Actually, they go this way. Um, yeah, we don't need it in this one. Okay. That's awesome. Look at that. And this is a little... Um, a, a, a little deeper guys I did make the box a little deeper if you don't want that much room in yours then you could definitely um, make it a 5 8 of an inch but the reason I did it this way uh, was because I could see that there was a little resistance when I would close up the box because the jars are a little tall so it depending on the height of your jars that's what you're how you're going to make your gusset this is just what I'm using but like if I wanted to lift these up all I have to do is add a couple of pieces of paper underneath to build that back up and I might even do that so anyway this is oh, I like that though I really do so let's open it up and this, all this tells me that all I need is a strip right here to keep them from, all I need is a little strip right here to keep them from um, coming to the front. Because right here is where I want to leave the, 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 the section for the spoon. So we can do that right now if you want. Let me go ahead and grab a little piece of paper. And this measures 5 inches, so let's do it a little under 5 inches, the length right here. So we're going to cut it a little under five inches um, and then we're going to, we need it to be, I'm going to say an inch and a half. We need a little strip of paper that measures an inch and a half by five. Actually under five because you don't want it to in interfere with the sides of the box. So just a little under five. And let's see if we have enough room to slide this in. It needs to be a little shorter. So I'm going to say about maybe four and four and seven eighths. Maybe a little less. Depending on how you make your finished box. So see, you want this to slide in here, but when we close our lid, we don't want, want it to be on the way of our lid. And if it was longer, it would be in the way of our lid. So just kind of measure um, the, the length on your box. Now what we're going to do with this, we're going to go ahead and score at... Um, 
grab my tool. I'm going to go ahead and score it half an inch. I'm going to score it half an inch and then I'm going to move it to an inch and I'm going to score again. And you're going to see why in a sec. So let me move that. Now we're going to fold these score lines that we just made. One of them is going to go in and the other one's going to go out like an accordion fold. And the piece that we folded onto itself, we're going to add glue and we're going to close it up. So let me just add glue here and burnish it with my bone folder so it'll stay glued. And you'll see what why I'm doing this in a second. Okay, and then we're going to, this, we're going to glue it right here. And what that's going to do, that's going to keep our jars from moving to the front. And that's what we wanted to do, to keep from moving to the front. So let's add glue down here. And that is the purpose of this little piece right here. That's the only purpose it serves. It keeps it from uh, moving. I can see this sticking out a little bit. I can see what, that my paper is sticking out a little bit at the bottom. And I want to make sure it makes good contact. So I'm just trimming that little strip piece off. And I'm going to glue this in place. So my little containers will not move. And there it is. And right here is the room where you would put your little spoon or your little scoop or whatever you decide to um, to include so they can scoop up the um, glitters or whatever. So let me close this up. Let's make sure that this works. Yeah, perfectly. See, See how these line up and they don't move to the front. See, they're not moving. They're staying put where they are. They might move a little bit to the side, but not enough to that you can really tell. So that's fine. By reducing that one eighth of an inch that I did, it kind of helped it a little bit. So here is the uh, bottom base of our box. Now I'm going to open it up because, well, I don't have to open it up. You have a die that is circles. I did mine in glitter. I think that's all the circles. That's this die right here. And we have to add glue because we gotta we have to add the rings right up here on your um and I'm just gonna do one. I'm not gonna complete the whole thing because the video will be too long. I just want you to get the gist of it. And you set your circle right down in the center and glue it down. Like that's that's basically it. That's all you have to do. And you're going to do that all the way uh, to all eight sections. And for me, it's easier to add it to the edge of my uh, ring on the paper than it is on this little teeny tiny ring. So for me, it's easier this way. Any glue that's, that I uh, kind of overshot, that will dry up clear and not a problem. So there it is. There's two of them. Let's do one more. And we're almost done. Um, if the video gets cut off, guys, and I don't get to to decorate it completely, I don't think I will do a little short beady video uh, because for me it's just not worth it, and I don't think for you either. Um, but I'm just showing you, like, this is the decorative part. So you have eight of them all together. You have to cut this out four times, and they are attached. So, But you can break them apart if you want. So that I just started it. So now we're going to take the frame, this die, this one right here, and you're going to cut as many. If you want to put one in the front, you're going to cut one for there. If you're going to put one here, you got to cut one for here. And then if you're going to put one on the inside of the lid, then you need another one. So if, you, if you're going to want it in all those places, you're going to need a total of three. So I'm going to add this right here. 
this frame is going to be right here and again I'm going to add the glue to my box and, and I recommend that you do this first because a lot of times um, there will be too much bulk and when you put your lid on there's going to be too much bulk and your lid is gonna there's going to be a gap it's not gonna shut flat and stay flat without magnets or anything like that because for me I'm shooting I, I don't want to have to use magnets and just set this down center it So there is my frame that goes around to coordinate with the little rings that I'm putting around my um, ah, this one it's not glued down. So make sure it's nice and glued down. Sorry guys for moving it, but I want to make sure it's glued down. I don't like when I have to do it on video because it's harder on video. Okay, you have a piece in your die that looks like this. This is the one that cuts the lid, the top and bottom. So we're going to, it already has... Uh, the score marks right here where you're going to uh, line it up and this you're going to fold. Now normally she tells you to cut one but don't cut any. Just cut two of these. Remember this lid is going to go like this right here. This lid goes right here. So what I want you to do is to uh, cut another piece of paper and all I did was measure from this score line guys the first score line to the to here and then from here to here. And that's how I got the measurements for this little piece. Because this is, uh, you know, this is kind of pretty uh, basic. You know, you guys know how to measure and, and cut your paper and all that. And uh, make sure your your paper is facing the right way. And then this frame goes right on top of this, right on top of here. And this is the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue to the edge right here. All the way around. My hand's not very steady, guys. But it's okay. So now I'm going to get my frame and I'm going to line it up and this is going to be the top of my box. I need to pick it up guys so I can shift it where I need it to be. There we go. It looks pretty good. Ah! I shifted it too much. So you can either put it on the frame or you can put it on your uh, lid. I usually put it on the lid. Now this lid is going to sit right here. So we're going to go ahead and fold at the score line. It does have a score line right there. At just one of the score lines, you're not gonna, the first one, you're not gonna fold it. Just leave it, just fold the second one. Cause this is gonna go right up here. And this is how we figure out where our lid needs to go. So when you when we glue this on and you open this up, this is what you see. So let's get the back part done as well. And I'm not going to put a frame on the back part. So I'm just going to go ahead and add glue to this and put it in place. And it's the same thing. I just measure. You need two. When you measure your lid, you need two because the two pieces that you cut out are exactly the same size. Okay, let's 
put this down and And we're going to go ahead and fold that score line and this is going to be the bottom and I like to glue the bottom one on first I like to glue the bottom one on first because of um, so look at all that glitter so I glue to the back to the spine part right here we're going to do the bottom one first because it's going to look neater this way. And then add glue to your, to the, to the, to the bottom of your, of your box. And we're going to get our box. Make sure you have your applicators facing in the direction that you want them to be. And we're going to line this up. All we're going to do is line it up and glue it down. Make sure it's nice and glued at the bottom and on the spine. Take my bone folder. And at the bottom. So there's that. And now we're going to do the top, but the top we're not going to add glue here, just on the spine. Make sure you have plenty of glue. And we're going to just going to lay it on top, line it up, and glue it down. And like I said, just at the spine. So go ahead and burnish that. Make sure it's making contact. And we're going to cover that up anyway. You're not even going to see that. Because um, I am going to add a strip all the way around. See how that looks right there? You can even see the score mark. If you can see your score mark, that's the way you need it to be. So when we open this up, guys, there is our... Um, ah, don't come undone. There is our box. Let me give it a minute to dry before I open it up. Now, we do have the uh, word makeup that comes out of that set. And it is where? Might have dropped it. Here it is. There's the word makeup. And we're going to go ahead and put this up here. And actually, I'm going to put it up here where there are no flowers. And this I just kind of eyeball, to be quite honest. And you guys know how to do this. But our box is pretty much done. I feel like I'm having to rush and I don't like rushing. I guess that's why I don't like to do tutorials because um, the results can be a whole lot better. So I hope you guys uh, take your time when you're making yours. That way yours will be beautiful and not like mine that's a rush job. There's make and then up. So it's two separate words.